As of right now, the Volkswagen Polo is South Africa's best-selling car. Now, what I know about sales and marketing and such like is a bit scary, but I would assume to get that title, you need a good mix of looks, style, comfort and price. And that means you'll please most of the people most of the time. Now, while that makes good business sense, it doesn't mean that you can't have a bit of fun every now and again. And so, a few years back, someone in their R&D department, someone who is possibly of questionable sanity, or was high on something, or both, had the brainwave of creating a polo that could go off-road. Or at least looked like it could go off-road. Somehow it got past the sane members of Volkswagen's esteemed board, and the Cross Polo was born. It turned out to be somewhat less successful locally than the straight up and down sister polo, but not because it wasn't any good. In fact, I'm not sure why it didn't do as well. The previous diesel-powered version was good-looking and a lot of fun to drive. The new generation gets the option of a petrol engine, and while I generally prefer petrol, this time, I think it's a mistake. The old Cross Polo had VW's fantastic 1.9 diesel. The new one makes do with a 1.6 petrol. Maybe it's because Volkswagen came to their senses and realized that as much as people who go off-road prefer a diesel engine, no one would actually take a Cross Polo off-road, so a petrol engine would be fine. And it would be, except they fitted this one. Maybe I'm making the mistake of comparing it to the old one, but this one just isn't as much fun. I mean, it's fine around town and in traffic, but when you want to get going, it just doesn't have any real poke. 77 kilowatts and 155 newton meters just isn't enough for this car. But the good news is that you do get a diesel. It's also a 1600. It has the same kilowatt count as our test car, but 95 newton meters more, and a price tag inflated by 25 grand. That said, we drove the regular Polo with the diesel motor, and we loved it. It may just be what the Cross Polo needs. Plus, you'll get the soundtrack to make you believe that this car belongs in the great outdoors. But it doesn't. They've raised the ride height by 15 millimeters, but compared to standard Polo, the suspension is the same, the wheelbase and the track are the same, even the turning circle is the same. You do not have to traverse the Kalahari to realize that this car is not a Bundu Basho. I took it over a bit of slightly corrugated ground and got bounced around the place something quite terrible. On regular roads though, this car is just fine, with decent suspension and steering, and a 5-speed gearbox with a great shift action, even though the clutch does take a little late. The Cross may be the tattooed relation of the common or garden variety polo, but it's no toughy. Comfortable, but not tough. The interior is fairly dull, in fact the only thing interesting in here are the seats with their mesh-like material. The rest is standard polo, which means it's well laid out, it's decently put together and the materials are pretty good. But it is fairly functional more than anything else. Our test car was fitted with a few options like the multi-function steering wheel and the auxiliary jack, but even those don't lift the inside of this car to anything beyond ordinary. There's no extra load space either, you get 280 litres, just like regular polo. You do, however, have the option to fit a removable tow bar. All in all, there's not much mechanically or interior-wise to make you think this car is worth the 30,000 Rand more than a 1.6 Polo trendline, and when you analyze the figures, it looks less promising. The Cross has a slower 0 to 100 time, a lower top speed, and a slightly higher fuel consumption figure. But if you're looking for value in this car, all you have to do is look at it. It's just so much better looking than the standard Polo that it's hard to believe they come out of the same factory. The front end is particularly nice with its anthracite and chrome bits and its honeycomb grille with the integrated fog light. And these wheels are just marvelous. Out of the 2,000 Polos they're selling a month, this is the one that will get you noticed. It's not just the front end, or the roof rails, or the wraparound body protection, or the rear end that somehow doesn't look as dumpy as the original. It's all these things, together with the raised ride height that makes this Polo the best looking one to date.
This is one of those cars that doesn't really make sense on paper. It doesn't go off-road, the interior is not much better, it's not the cheapest, and the performance figures don't really stack up against the rest of the Polo Pack. In fact, in that regard, this car is a bit like a couch potato impersonating a mountaineer. But this car is so attention-grabbingly good-looking that it's worth spending the extra money on the Polo that doesn't blend in. The 1600 petrol motor doesn't do much for the driving enjoyment of the Cross Polo. This car needs more power so the ride matches the extrovert styling. The interior could do with a bit more character as well, but there are so many things right about the way this Polo looks that it almost makes sense to part with the extra cash for that reason alone.